Introducing the Deer C D60 1080p Wi-Fi drone. I got this from Amazon US. It cost me $60 plus 13 shipping. It only took around a week to arrive. This is actually out of stock in the UK at the moment. That's why we ordered it from the US. But I'll still leave links for it. And I'll leave alternative links for the UK if you do want to use those. For very similar drones, the DSC D70 and the DSC D40. These are affiliate links and you are directly supporting the channel by using them. A huge thank you to everybody that does use them. And this also allows us to get more products like this drone, for example. Okay, then let's get straight into the videos. So this works on the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band and it is the D60. It comes in a well presented box and includes some propellers, a screwdriver and a USB lead, the battery. Now don't throw this card away, it contains the QR codes for the application, the controls. It is all made of plastic unfortunately but at this price point it's to be expected. Hmm. Doesn't feel the best kind of quality. To be honest, it's not too bad. It's kind of what I expected. Oh, we've got a little, uh, that might be for the camera gimbal. That might be good. That might be useful. I don't think these do much. They might have a little bit of copper wire running through them or something. But, uh, I don't think they're going to do much. They might help. And then we get the drone itself. quite a good size it's quite lightweight still feels toy grade as long as everything works did we will be pretty happy here we do have our expectations set pretty realistic hmm the camera does look a little bit better That's the battery. It's just your typical drone battery. We do have a USB-C and indication lights. It has a red light while it's charging. And then when it's fully charged, you'll get a green indication light. This is handy. It took around 30 minutes to fully charge. And then how does it fit? Okay, it locks into place. That's nice. It's nice and secure. And that actually gives the drone a bit more weight. That does. That's quite a bit heavier. The drone weighs 92.1 grams without the battery and with the battery it weighs 103.3 grams. It's quite lightweight still but it's still a little heavier than the Timu ones. Very simple to operate, simply turn it on pressing in the back button until the front light starts to blink and then you use the left analog stick on the controller, you press it forwards and backwards to pair it up to the drone. To unlock the propellers, you pull both of them inward and down in like a V-shaped motion. You need to do this for each flight. One thing I'm really liking about this drone is we do actually have control of the camera. We've got the gimbal control on the remote, which is very, very useful. The controller feels a little bit cheaper and plasticky than I would like. It's like a, it's still kind of toy grade really, to be honest. Two AA batteries instead of three, which is pretty handy. Everything feels all right. It just feels a little lightweight. But like I said, at this price point, it's to be expected. I don't want to take it off in the office just in case it needs um, the trim doing and stuff. Screens everywhere. Okay, so let's get this outside then. There we go. To free up the propellers. It's quite windy, man. I'm a bit nervous about... I took this to my local drone spot, but unfortunately I can never get a Wi-Fi signal when I'm here and I can never get the camera to sync up. I did manage to get some footage from the drone outside, but they're from different areas. This is the flight test. We'll just go through the flight test and then I'll show you some footage from the drone. The pitch, the yaw, and the movement in general feels fine. It's nice and easy to fly. I feel like I've got full control of this, even at distance. I would recommend keeping it in sight though. As long as it's in sight, I think it's okay. It flies really well, especially when it's got the wind in its back. When it's coming towards the wind, it does struggle a little bit. And we are in a bit of a wind tunnel here. It's trying against the wind, struggling. Really struggling the higher it goes. 
It's heavier than the Timu ones though, for sure. And although it's only a little extra weight, it does actually feel like it gives you more control in these kind of conditions. After running a timer, we got 15 minutes flight time. Actually, more than 15 minutes. I put it up in the air twice, and we actually had two little crashes with it as well. So I'd say in total, we've had about 20 minutes flight time minus the crashes. That's also not using the camera. I did notice when we use the camera, it does slightly use the battery cooker, but we're still getting around 13 minutes even with the camera. I think that's really good, especially for a really budget friendly drone. If I'm totally honest, I have really struggled to find a drone that works at all. Sometimes they fly okay, but the cameras and stuff don't work. This one, everything works as it should. It's quite far away. Even when the drone's really high or really far away, it's still really responsive. Oh, take it up or we're gonna crash. And we crashed. <laughs> into a tree up quite high. We should get that though. Oh, it's tangled good. Let's try him again. Don't forget, after each crash or each landing, you might need to reset the gyro. You can land and take off as usual, but if you crash it or stall it or have to drop it from the sky, then you might need to reset the gyro. Let's try and catch it. There we go. Okay, to the drone camera footage then. The drone camera works absolutely fine everywhere I've tested it, except for the stones on the reservoir. Although the quality of the camera isn't exactly professional grade, it does all work as intended. A few little things I was disappointed about. It is a little shaky and I haven't figured out how to stabilize this yet, but this is also due to my flying. And when you trim the drone and hold it in position, it isn't as shaky as you can see here. We can get some fairly reasonable footage. One of the disappointing things for me though is there is no audio. I should have maybe used a microphone here so we could have got some backup audio, but never mind, we know for next time. But as you can see, the drone is absolutely fine. The camera works fine. No connectivity issues or anything like that. It is just a little bit shaky and bear in mind there's no audio. One thing I would say, like with all cameras, you will obviously get better footage or better quality photos in bright and well-lit areas. I will try and add some low-light footage as well though, so you guys can get an idea of what it is like in low-light. Showed the dog, see what she thought, and she was not impressed. Don't worry, the drone wasn't on, I was just using the camera at this point, but yeah, she's not impressed. I left the drone connected in the car and took it for a little drive around. I wanted to make sure that it didn't disconnect and it is absolutely fine everywhere that I tested it the only place it does not connect is by the stones at the reservoir for some reason I just can't get the camera on in that location but it connects and works fine everywhere else without any dropouts or anything the application is really easy to install you just either scan the QR code that's included in the little card here or you can search for the DSC FPV drone application in the Google and Apple stores. Once you've installed that it's really easy to operate, it's just simply open the application and then you want to connect to your Wi-Fi if you want to access the camera. All you do is open your Wi-Fi settings on your mobile and then select the DSC drone as your Wi-Fi connection. Key point of interest here, if you've got auto reconnect set on your mobile device to your home router and you're trying to set the drone up near your home, I would recommend switching this off as the mobile device always prioritizes your router over the drone and it will keep disconnecting it from the camera. Also, the phone may give you a message saying that there is no internet connection from this Wi-Fi, but that's fine. We don't actually want the internet connection. We just need the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band. All of the functions and the controls are pretty easy. It's all one touch and it's all on the top of the screen. It's nice and beginner friendly. Things I really like about this drone, the camera gimbal. I think this is an awesome feature at this price point. I think the battery is pretty good on the drone as well. The application seems to be seamless, there's no issues or dropouts at all, I don't have any issues whatsoever with it. The drone syncs up nice and easy almost every time. You may have to do the V-motion once or twice. It folds away really nice and small and compact, you could carry it around really easily and it's really easy just to unfold, throw the drone battery in 
and it's ready to go. I really like all of these features. There are a few small caveats to it. I'm not too keen on the controller, it feels really lightweight and cheap. Also, the mobile phone holder, although it's got a clasp that holds the phone in place, the way the aerials are angled, it sort of pushes the phone out of the bracket. Now, you can lift the bracket forward on a slight angle, this stops the phone being forced out, but then it becomes wobbly, so I certainly wouldn't be trusting one of my Samsungs or my iPhone in that. Definitely not. Power button and the LED indication buttons are all really clear on the front and the back. They blink when they need the drone resyncing, and the drone controller also beeps when the batteries start to run low. All very good features at this price point. I can't find many negatives with this drone, to be honest. The only things I could really say is that the camera has no audio and that the footage isn't as stable as I would like, but again, at this price point, those things are kind of to be expected. Guys, I can recommend this for $60 100%. I will leave links in the description and they are affiliate links. If you found any part of this video helpful at all, or if you enjoyed any part of the content, or just enjoy supporting small creators like me, please consider leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel with your notifications on, that way you never miss any future uploads. Thanks to each and every one of you for being here today. I appreciate all of you guys, and until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. I'm Craig, this is Really Random Reviews, and I'll see you in my next video.